He rose through the ranks to become the first African-American fire chief of the Mount Pleasant Fire Department. And in this edition of Quintess Close Ups, I talk with Fire Chief Herbert Williams. Well, Chief Williams, you know, you and I have been communicating via email and phone about this particular interview. And this is my first time actually meeting you. Okay. And tell me, how are you? I'm sensational, man. Yeah. Sensational. Yeah. And I know that you have been the fire chief here for the Mount Pleasant Fire Department for at least seven years now. Yes, going on my eighth year. Really? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tell me, how's that going? Wonderful. Challenging, but I love it. Yeah. Challenging, but love it. And, you know, I'm wondering, you know, if I'm, if I'm and I hope I'm correct, but you are the first African-American fire chief in the department? Yes, I am. Tell me, what does that mean to you? <laughs> what does it mean to me? That means I've been blessed. Yeah. First of all, yeah. I've been blessed. First is also an example of when you put God first. Yes. And when you work hard, and you do what you're supposed to do. I mean, like, education, training, that you're, to me, um, raise is not a factor when you do those things. Mm -hmm. And that uh, me being a first African American fire chief here, it gives people indication that it's possible for anybody else. That's right. That's what it means for me. Yeah, and obviously you can't do this job alone. Nope. And I know you have a lot of people who are working yeah. with you. And you said this to the Mount Pleasant Magazine back in 2013. You said, yeah. quote, I work with a group of people who allow me to do my job. Yes. And that way I can have a positive impact on the community. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you believe you have that group to help you do what you need to do in the community? Yes, I do. I'm blessed in a couple ways. Let me tell you what. First okay. of all, not only do I have professional people that know their job, as anybody as well as anybody in this country. The second thing, I got good people. I got good people. I got good people. And what I've been I've learned is, is that I allow people to do their job. You know, I will step in and I will do what I'm supposed to do and achieve, but I let people do their job. So they allow me to do what I need to do. Yeah. And you also said this too to the magazine, which is very interesting. We must prove that we are the best at what we do. Let's talk about now. Okay. Are you confident with the fire department? Say that again. Are you confident with the fire department and what they're doing for the Mount Pleasant? Yes, yes. Without a doubt, we're the best at what we do. Yeah. And and we prove it every day. And and, and, and not only from statistics. But, but from comments from the citizens, oh, yeah. from my interaction with the community, yeah. from both the political leaders and the everyday guy that's on the street, that, yeah. that, that, that we do what we need to do and we prove that we are not only good, we're excellent at what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you know, Mayor Linda Page was elected last November. Yes. Tell me, what's your relationship with her right now? Sensational. Yeah. She's awesome. I'm able to go to her and talk to her one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. I don't need an appointment. Right. I can walk into her office. She can walk into my office. Yeah. And, and personally, she's one of the biggest supporters that I have. And what I enjoy about her, not okay. only Mayor Page, but the rest of the council, sure. that they allow me to do my job. Yeah. No one tells me, Chief, this is what you got to do. do yeah. they, 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 they have confidence, and they let me do what I need to do for this community. Yeah. And speaking of which, you know, Mount Pleasant is really the third largest municipality right behind Charleston, North Charleston. Correct. Tell me, how, the, how are you making certain that the department stays number three? What we do is that we try to be on the cut, cutting edge. Yeah. I believe this, and I know you heard the thing about working outside the box. Oh, yes. I'm the kind of individual that just because we've been doing something the same way, it's not necessarily the best way. Yeah. I believe in doing things different. I believe in trying different things. Sure. I believe in if you fail, you back up your punt, you try something that's yeah, different. Right. And I think we take growth and we become what we want to by not eliminating myself, not keeping myself in a box. I got a quote on my board right here. It says, outline your life in pencil, not in pen. <laughs> I read about that, yeah. Yeah, you outline your life in pencil. And the reason I say that, if I outline my life in pencil or this organization, I'm able to erase and adjust the outlines of it to make, to fit the situation. If I do it in pen, I lock myself into a situation I can't grow. As okay. long as I've got a, a pencil, I can expand it, I can bring it in, I can adjust it to what I need to do. And I believe not only do you lie like that, I, you run the offer an organization where you don't outline in pen, outline in pencil. Yeah. That's what I believe in. And speaking of hard and easy, as you know, you really rose through the ranks here yes. from, you know, firefighter yes. chief. Yes. Walk me through that process. Came here in 1986, man. As a tail boy firefighter, I was so wrong, Mr. Washington, that I did not know that water was inside fire trucks. Wow. That's how wrong I was. And after I got into the business, yeah. 
I realized that this was something I really enjoyed because of it. the idea we were really servants that were working to help the community. Sure. But I also took advantage of training opportunities. Okay. Uh, not only did I get all my fire classes, I'm going to let you know I went back here and I got my college degree. Great. Through, through the town. Yeah. And the town paid for the last two years of my college degree. That's good. Uh, and, then, and then I went back to USC and got a, a certificate in um, management. But I was able to work every level. And I think what it does is give me a great understanding of what everybody deals with. Yeah. On a daily basis. And you know, I want to move to performance because, as you, I mentioned earlier, you have been, you know, fire chief here for eight years. Yeah. So as we sit here right now, what letter grade would you give yourself? As far as <laughs> a letter grade would I give myself? As you know, fire as chief. As fire chief, right? As a fire chief, you know, that's a good question. I have really never given thought. If I had to grade myself, I say I'm probably a B. Okay. And I would say B because um, I've done some things, I've learned some things, I've made some mistakes, but I'm. I'm not where I want to be. I'm also growing. If yes. uh, um, I can't, I I think if I said I've done a B would be a a, a fair grade. And before it was Fire Chief Williams, it was just you know Herbert Williams from Bennettsville. The Bennettsville, South Carolina. Yes. I want to take you back home. What yes. are your memories of there? Oh man, my memories are hard work. Yeah. I got some of my work at, at, from learning how to work already. Wow. From 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 growing up on a tobacco farm, from working in the summertime working on tobacco form, I've always known that you have to work hard. Yes. And I think what that taught me is that you don't ask for anything to be given to you. You have to work hard. And it, it, it taught me how to work hard and how I appreciate whatever you get. And that anything is possible. Yeah. And let's talk about family. Okay. I have a a daughter that's in the military. Wow. She's in she's at um Fort Hood, Texas. Okay. For uh matter of fact her eighteenth year. Wow. I've got a son that's a Matter of fact, just completed his junior year at Coastal Carolina. That's good. Yes, and been married to my wife. This is going on our 24th year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And talk to me how about how you and her met. <laughs> we met, i tell you what, I was, we met occasion out in one of the local nightclubs on a Friday night. Wow. I, was, I, was sitting to a, I was sitting by myself to a table. Okay. And be quite honest, having an adult beverage. Okay. And she came up and, and, and asked me that her feet was hurting. Can she sit down? Yeah. And basically, and we and we and we uh, thought of a conversation. Yeah. And I eventually invited her out to dinner, and that was about 25 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and we've been married for the last 24 years. Wow. Yes. That is awesome. Yeah. And you know, I read too that you're ordained deacon. I'm ordained deacon at our board of missionary. Ba yeah, Royal Missionary Baptist Church. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about Deacon Williams. Yes. Let me tell you how that works. Deacon William, and this is what I love about my leadership and I love about the mayor in the town. Yeah. A fire chief is what I do. A fire chief is not who I am. Yeah. That's just part of what I do. And everyone knows my work in my church is as important to me as anything in my life. Yeah. And this job affords me some opportunities to do some of my deacon duties, like attending funeral, vision six, talking to everyone. Uh -uh. That also is another aspect. It's how God works things out for me. I'm a servant as a fire chief, but I'm a servant as a deacon too. Yeah. So, so what it does is help me in both aspects. I get a chance to serve people from a professional level, also from a spiritual level, which, which, is, which, which I truly enjoy doing. Yeah. And we know that you're a fire chief yep. and ordained deacon, yep. father, you know, husband yep. and all that. Yep. But what is something else that people don't know about you? Yeah, I love to play golf. Really? I love to play golf. I, anytime I get a chance, I, I I enjoy being on the golf course, the links. I, I, I love playing golf. I love playing golf, and also um, I like running. Oh, me too. I'm, I'm a runner, and yeah. I, I, I like playing golf. Yeah. And, and, and I, if I don't run, I walk. I, I need to try to get 20, 15 to 20 miles a weekend. Sure. And, and, I, and I do that, but you no, know, I enjoy I enjoy golf, and I enjoy people watching. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I enjoy people I love watching. It, love it. I will go to amusement parks. Yeah. Amusement parks are uh, only being just to have me a seat because my wife and my son them love roller coasters. Oh, oh, my family. Those are like scary for me. Oh, Bob my family love them. And I will ride some of them. Okay. But but they love them. Once I decide not to ride, I love just giving me a seat, giving me a, uh, a couple of them days just watching people. Wow. I, I love watching people. I learn so much just by watching people. And let's rewind that tape for just a second because sure. you talked about golf. 
And I'm wondering, when did the golf bug bit you? About eight to ten years ago. Wow. About eight to ten years ago, I, I went out with some colleagues. And what it does for me, and, 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 and I think maybe you will understand it, okay. and, and I hope the audience understands it. Sure. Golf gets me away from um, this world that I live in as a fire chief and as a deacon. When I'm on the golf course, I don't have to answer questions. <laughs> I don't have to make decisions, yeah. and it gives me a chance. I'm out in the open. I'm in, I'm able to enjoy the fresh air. Sure. I'm able to talk about life instead of talking about working activity. Golf just gets me away. It gets me away from this life, that wow. I live. and 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 I need that. I I need that balance. He gives me another yes. balance, and he it hits the balance that I need to make me complete. Yeah. And you talked about this earlier. Outline your life in pencil, not pen. Yes. That's your motto. Yes, yes. And you know, I'm wondering as we talk about your future, what goals have you written out as far as your future is concerned? Okay. I want to work another, at least another five years. Okay. And at least another five years, and it just depends on what God leads me to, but I want to work at least another five years. I'll be 62 in five years. Wow. And I have about 34 years in business, business. In, 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 in public service. Sure. And then I think. And we'll see what God leads me to, but yeah. I think it's my opportunity to let someone else do this now after 34 years. After 34 years. And after I play golf, quite simple, there's a couple things I want to do. Um, after I finish here, yeah. I want to play golf three days a week. Wow. I want to be able to work around my church, and I want to enjoy just whatever comes. Yeah. God is good. Yeah, God is good. I don't have any more. I don't want to, I do not want to retire to go to work. work yeah. right if, 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 if I'm going to work, I will stay here. Yeah, there you go. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not retiring to look for another profession, and, and, and I do, I, I would love to play golf at least three days a week and work in the church, and I do have a goal, I told my wife, I got in my bucket list. When I retire, my goal is this, I want to start from Florida and go to Maine, and and, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to pick me up a golf course, each one of those states play me around the golf, each one of those states, yeah. that, that's the first thing on my bucket list. In the summer or, you know? Uh, I don't know, whenever I retire, in the yeah. summer, I'm going to start in Florida and I'm going to drive the whole East Coast. Wow. And then I'm playing around the golf. That's it. That's awesome. That's what I'm doing. Well, Chief Herbert Williams, this was so great. Man, I enjoyed talking to you, man. Thank you for coming by, man. Thank appreciate you. it. I appreciate Thank it. it.